You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by John Deere. And a very pleasant good evening, everyone, from the Beaverdam High School Fieldhouse. Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN present Beaverdam High School Golden Beaver Boys Basketball. And tonight it's a rivalry game in the Badger East. The Watertown Goslings are in town to take on your Beaverdam Golden Beavers. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Tronson with you inside the field house, and I'm joined on site by Justin Wilski, my videographer and engineer. Kyra Wilski's back at the 1430 ESPN Studios engineering our radio simulcast on this Friday night. Our broadcast is brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Columbus Family Dental, Hometown Glass and Improvement, and the Beaverdam Unified School District. Tonight's game is also a presentation of John Deere Horicon Works, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Air Care, Richards Insurance, Landmark Credit Union, Jerry's Automotive, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Ergo Bank, Great Harvest Bakery Cafe, Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly, Preferred Dental Partners, Slumberland, Kraft Heinz, Silica for Your Home, and Summit Ford. Welcome into the John Deere pregame show, everyone. Brought to you, as always, by our good friends at John Deere Horicon Works. We're just minutes away from the tip of this boys' basketball tilt between Beaver Dam and and Watertown starting our pregame show a little bit early tonight. Boy, we had some very quick JV and JV2 contests tonight, as those of you on the video side just saw the lights dimmed here inside the field house. But uh, Beaver Dam with a pair of wins. The, the Beaver Dam JV team just uh, defeated Watertown 67-42. to And in the JV2 game, it was Beaver Dam with a 49-33 win over the Goslings. So the varsity is up next. It is senior night 2023. Tonight the Golden Beavers will honor four seniors, three players and a manager. So that's always an emotional night. They're going to honor those seniors right after the national anthem before the start of the game. So those of you tuned in, stay with us as we will broadcast that tribute for you. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, an emotional night, as I said. The uh, seniors, the players, are uh, Quentin Cabreda, also Eli Titus, and Caleb Schmuel as the uh, teams head out onto the floor for the warm-ups. So we'll have coverage of that uh, senior night tribute coming your way. But I tell you what, both these teams come in feeling pretty darn good about themselves. And let's talk about Beaver Dam, first of all. Beaver Dam, they lost on Tuesday night at Wanakee, but they're not feeling too bad about that because they took the Warriors down to the wire in their own gym. They uh, were right there with them pretty much the entire way. Wanakee just made a few extra plays down the stretch, but uh, Beaver Dam had played really, really well in that game. The night before, of course, they won that thrilling double overtime game at Milton, and so Beaver Dam, after... You know, a tough couple of losses. They had they had come into that game against Milton having lost three in a row, uh, feeling a lot better about themselves after the huge double overtime win at Milton and then playing really, really well against Wanakee. Watertown, kind of the same story. I mean, Watertown has struggled this year, but they had arguably, well, I don't think there's argu anything to argue about. It was, their, it was their biggest win of the season, no doubt, on Tuesday night when they went to DeForest and took down the Norskis 70 to 64 and this just again goes to show you that you know that there are no freebies in the Badger East Conference and sometimes you might look at a team's record and say well that's not very flashy uh, it doesn't matter you know what and credit the Goslings because like I said it's been a struggle they're, they're coming in at 3 and 18 on the year and you know it's been tough W's have been really hard to come by you know, they're, they're on the road at DeForest. DeForest is a quality team. They, you know, it's late in the season. They could have they could have said, ah, we're going to mail it in. Or, well, you know, they could have they could have given up. Uh, no, th these players, they have continued to work hard and battle. And if you're head coach Chad Hayes, you got to like that. You got to be very pleased with that. And uh, so a hats off to Watertown for uh, that huge win against the Norskis in DeForest on Tuesday. 
Uh, that was their first and uh, only conference win this year. They're one and eleven in the Badger East. Beaver Dam's five and eight in conference play, coming in at ten and eleven overall on the season. Of course, the Golden Beavers with a win tonight can get back to five hundred. This is a rivalry game, as we talked about. We, I, I mentioned this on previous broadcasts. It's nice to see Beaver Dam and Watertown, you know, reunited in the same conference. There were a couple years there, uh, not too long ago, where they were in opposite leagues, but. I said all is right with the world when you've got Beaverdam and Watertown in the same conference. So, you know, nice to see the rivalry here kind of renewed. And also the fact that uh, there's seeding coming up this weekend. So, hey, one more chance tonight to pad the stats a little bit for that computer seeding that will be released later this weekend. Yeah, the, it's hard to believe, but the WIAA playoffs for the boys start a week from next Tuesday. So that's our matchup tonight. We've got Beaverdam and Watertown, and right now we're going to step aside as the Beaverdam High School pep band entertains the crowd here. When we come back, we'll continue our John Deere pregame show, and up next you'll hear comments from Tim Ladrin, head coach of Beaverdam. But right now we'll step aside for a two-and-a-half-minute break. We're back in two-and-a-half minutes on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. John Deere not only builds great equipment, it's a great place to build your career and a high quality of life. You see, there's a certain kind of pride in being a part of a great American brand. It's the security that comes from learning new skills you'll have for a lifetime, a more confident future with unlimited growth opportunities, and the knowledge that you're valued and rewarded with a competitive benefits package. We're Deer Strong and Horicon Proud. Are you one of us? Summit Ford Beaver Dam. We are committed to serving the customers in our community, to bringing you into our dealership and making the buying process easy, fun, stress-free, and memorable. Thank you for choosing us and voting us Dodge County's best place to buy a new or used vehicle. Stop in today for a test drive and to see how we can help you find the car of your dreams. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest-free financing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. Hi, I'm Josh Schneider with Silica for Your Home. We have a great feature available in our showrooms, our digital price tags. They search the internet every day and allow us to adjust the prices based on our competitors. That ensures you are always getting the best deal. If it finds a lower price, it will automatically change our Silica price in real time. These digital price tags are all about saving you time and money. Shop Silica for Your Home for the best sales, service, and selection. It's the President's Day sales event at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam. Hello, this is Brent Reed, treating everyone like a dignitary with $10,000 off in-stock 22 Ram 1500 Big Corn Crew Cabs or finance for 1.9%. Brand new Jeep Compass Trailhawks with all the goodies under forty dollars and take $4,000 off in-stock Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 4xEs, not to mention the governmental tax credit. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by John Deere. Our John show inside Beaver Dam High School. Mike Tronson standing by once again with Tim Ladrin, head coach of the Golden Beavers. And Tim, what a difference a couple of days makes. Uh, I was here in this gym uh, last week, uh, Saturday. And uh, after a tough loss to a very good DeForest team, and guys had, uh, you know, weren't feeling too good about that. And I know you weren't a little disappointed. All of a sudden, though, Monday night you go and you get a huge double overtime win on the road at Milton. The next night, Tuesday, I know you didn't get the win, but you took one a key to the brink in there, Jim. Guys got to be feeling a lot better about themselves right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, you know, we always try to just focus on how we play, right? But I mean, the results matter. Yeah. So. Um, you know, getting that one on Monday was a big deal for us, and and really I think it just started. You know, we gave up that 11-2 or 11-2 run early, um, 
but answering that with 11 0 run of our own on that Milt, the game against Milton, I think opened our eyes a little bit of what we're capable of doing and kind of carried it from there. You know, there's always ebbs and flows, I think, in any season. You've got a, a younger team, which we've talked about this year, but I think in a lot of ways they've, they've done a pretty good job weathering the storm. Yeah, I, I think so. It's a tough, tough group of kids. I mean, I, I feel like I've said that like every interview, but they are. They're a tough group of kids and, and uh, mentally tough, and we scratch and claw to try to get whatever we can. Um, you know, uh, I think our mental toughness is solid. Uh, we're not afraid to bang and do some of those things, and it's a really fun group to coach because of that. And, um, you know, and those things have shown in the, in the way we've played at times. The biggest thing now is, is that consistency here as we hit to the end of the season. I was going to ask you, we're, we're almost to the end of the season now. You've got tonight, a couple games next week, and then it's into the postseason. Is the team, in your mind, trending in the right direction? Oh, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, but you know, we've been here before. A couple weeks ago, we beat Stoughton here, and they were ranked eighth in the state, and then we turned around and, and played three bad games in a row. So, you know, that's the challenge for us tonight is to continue to play good basketball like we have been over the last couple games and uh, try to keep this thing going in the right way. Watertown tonight. I know these guys need no introduction. A rivalry game here, and uh, you played them and beat them at their place uh, last time around. Now, they're coming in probably feeling really good about themselves after a huge win for them on Tuesday at DeForest. What do you got to do to be successful this time around? Well, I, you know, it's probably it's two teams that are playing probably as good a basketball as they played all year. So, And they're scary because they, they have athletic guards and they got the big 6'8 kid inside. And so, again, for us, talking about 6'8, that makes it hard for us. Um, you know, but they're, you know, we gotta we gotta handle their guards. They're the good athletic young guards, and we gotta we gotta do a good job, you know, against the six eight kid, and uh, we keep them off the glass, and you know, do the things that, that we've been doing over the last you know over the last week, and we can do that. I feel like we'll be fine, but I mean, they're playing good basketball. They're, you know, and they got a lot of talent all over the place. It's also senior night tonight. I know it always gets fairly emotional. Uh, what do you what do you say about this year's senior class? Yeah, it's a good. I mean, it's a good group of kids. I mean. Again, you know, the teams always kind of take the mentality of their seniors, regardless of who your captains or leaders are. You know, the kids always look toward the seniors. And so, uh, you know, Q and Caleb and Eli have been with us all four years. Um, they're great kids. They're coachable. Um, you know, they, they've certainly had some ups and downs in their careers. Um, you know, Eli's been a tremendous practice kid for us kid that really really works hard for us on the practice floor he's great in scout just a really really nice kid super coachable you know Q has come a long way you know I can remember when Q was a freshman I'm thinking I don't know if he's gonna make it with us and I just don't know if he's gonna be ready and he's really worked hard at it he's played AAU he's put time in and he's done a good job of putting himself in a good spot he's played some big minutes for us obviously this year and Caleb has really come a long way. He's a kid that played JV as a junior, um, you know, capable scorer, but he's really done a nice job in the weight room and put himself into a spot where he's become a really, really good defender as well. And so, you know, those three kids have been tremendous assets to us. And then Bree, our manager, came on this year. You know, it's her first year with us and has done a really good job. She's very basketball smart, which helps us on the bench with stats and things like that. So it's four really solid, good kids that, that uh, you know, you always lose seniors and they're always going to be tough to loop miss. And uh, there's some, some big shoes to fill for sure next year. Should be a fun night, an emotional night. Tim, good luck to you and the boys. And thanks, as always, for your time. Do appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. All right, Tim Ladron, head coach of Beaver Dam. We'll step aside. We're back for more of the John Deere pregame show right after this on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by John Deere. American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time-consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richards Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an Auto Owners Insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richards Insurance? To find out, call Richards Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. 
with offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. Hi, this is Sandy from McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We are proud to support all area athletes. While at home watching or listening to your favorite sports team, why not be comfortable? McKinstry's is a Lazy Boy Comfort Studio. We have sofas, recliners, sectionals, and reclining sofas in stock and ready for prompt delivery. Stop into McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam and add comfort to your home. Year after year, McKinstry's. For every, where's the grocery list? I'll go to the store. So you'll fill up my car on the way home? Moment. If it has to do with your life and your money, it's a landmark moment. And Landmark Credit Union is here to help. With free checking accounts that offer you the choice of getting paid dividends on your balance or earning rewards points on your purchases. Opening an account is fast and simple and gives you access to Credit Hub, powered by Savvy Money, which shows your credit score so you can keep your finances healthy. Landmark Credit Union. Visit LandmarkCU.com, insured by NCUA. Hi, my name is Michelle, and I'm the plant manager for the Beaver Dam Kraft Heinz plant. I'm excited to share with you that we are rolling out new schedules to allow people more time with their families. Come meet me and my team and let us tell you about the exciting changes we are making to our schedules and our great benefits. Please go to careers.crafthines.com, search by Beaver Dam, and see all the opportunities we have available. We believe family time is important. Our new schedule will allow you to have a schedule that works for you and your family. All shifts are 12 hours with up to three to four days off per week. We offer shift differentials and premiums for weekend work at Kraft Heinz. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their spirit pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by John Deere. And we continue our John Deere pregame show inside the Beaverdam High School Fieldhouse. Mike Tronson with you on Daily Dodge TV and simulcasting tonight on 1430 ESPN. It's boys basketball senior night in the fieldhouse as Beaverdam gets set to entertain Watertown. We'll have the senior night presentation in just a few moments. Be sure to stay up to date with the Beaverdam Unified School District at bdusd.org and follow them on Twitter and Instagram at BeaverdamUSD. The Beaverdam Unified School District also identifies a school of the month during the school year. A shout out to the students, staff, and families of this month's school community being recognized, Beaverdam High School. Now our national anthem. That's the Beaverdam High School Pep Band with our national anthem here inside the field house. And again, as I mentioned before, we have our starting lineups and the opening tip. We're going to have our senior night presentation. Thank you to our four great seniors. 
the truth of trying to that way are the cornerstone of what Beaver Dam basketball has become. Their willingness to be leaders and put the program on their teammates before themselves is a big reason for the success we've had as a team throughout their careers. So the same attributes that carry them on the floor will also carry them away from the floor. We're honored to have these fine young men and women be a part of our program. Their great attitude and character will allow them to be very successful young men and women after graduation. More importantly, these seniors are true to Dassel, having a cumulative GPA of 3.42. Thank you for all of your hard work and dedication to Beaver Dam Basketball. You will always be a part of the Beaver Dam Basketball family. There you have it, our senior night tribute. Right now, a little photo opportunity out on the floor for the uh, seniors. Those seniors again, uh, Caleb Schmuel, Quentin Cabreda, Eli Titus, all being honored uh, tonight here. And uh, Brianna Werning, also uh, one of the managers, being honored as well. Always gets a little emotional. When, uh, when they do the senior night tributes. And, you know, every class uh, leaves its mark in, in some way, and certainly this class has, has done that, like so many others before and so many others that are yet to come. All right, let's give you the starting lineups first for Watertown, coached by Chad Hayes. The guards are Brett Schwefel, six-foot sophomore, along with Jake Hurchin, 5'11 sophomore, Reese Camrath, 5'11 junior, and Calvin Hurchin, a 5'11 sophomore. Rounding out starting five for the Goslings is Ethan Johnson. Ethan, a 6'8 senior. So again, for Watertown, it's Brett Schwefel, Jake Hurchin, Reese Camrath, Calvin Hurchin, and Ethan Johnson getting the start for the Goslings. Now, starters for Beaver Dam, coached by Tim Ladron. They are going to start the three seniors. And those three seniors again, Caleb Schmuel, a six-foot senior guard. Quentin Cabreda, a forward at six feet, four inches tall. Eli Titus at a guard, 5'11 senior. Also starting tonight for uh, Beaverdam, J.T. Call at guard, a six-foot junior. And Jack Jens, 6'3 junior forward. So again, for Beaverdam, it is J.T. Call, Caleb Schmuel, Eli Titus, Quentin Cabreda, and Jack Jens, as I mentioned, the three senior players do get the start for the Golden Beavers. For those of you on the radio side that can't see it, Beaver Dam's in the home white jerseys and shorts tonight with the green and gold numbers and trim. Watertown wearing their light blue jerseys and shorts tonight with white numbers and white and dark blue trim. In the first half of play, Beaver Dam will go right to left across your radio dial. And Watertown will go left to right across the radio dial or across your daily Dodge TV video screen. Send us an email during the broadcast tonight. Sports at dailydodge.com. 
sports at dailydodge.com. You can send me your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for. I'd be happy to give you a shout out on the broadcast. You know the drill, we've done this for a long time and we always enjoy interacting with you on the broadcast. Again, in fact, we got an email that uh, just came in. We'll have to get to that here in uh, just a second, but it just came in during our pregame show. We'll have to get to that for you. But they're right now they're ready to uh, get this thing tipped off and it's gonna be Quentin Cabrera jumping against Ethan Johnson. There's the whistle, ball's up in the air and the tap is gonna be controlled by Watertown. This game is underway here inside the field house. Glad you're with us on Friday night. And Watertown going to work. Jake Hurchin, Johnson post feed, kicks it back out and there's a three pointer no good for Hurchin from the right side, rebound grabbed by Cabrera and he'll trot leisurely across the timeline. Beaverdam with its first offensive possession, opening 25 seconds of play here in the first half. This is Caleb Schmuel, one of the aforementioned seniors. Pass down low, Cabrera catches, shoots, and scores. They played the high-low game to perfection. Schmuel with the helper, Cabrera with the tip-in, 2-0 in favor of the Golden Beavers early on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Not even a minute gone by. Gosling's with our second offensive possession. And with it here is Calvin Hurchin down to the right corner. Driving into the lane, Reese Camrath sends it left side. Right back up top now. And now they give it to Hurchin, Jake Hurchin, leaving it off for Calvin Hurchin. We've got a lot of Hurchins on the roster. We've got to keep them all straight. Johnson, right block, bounce pass out taken by Schwefel. Return feed Johnson, looks it to the left elbow, a little touch pass. Camrath, nice backdoor pass. There's Johnson for a lay in. Camrath with a beautiful helper. Ethan Johnson took that pass and scored. We're tied at two. And we're a minute and 25 seconds into the game on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Nice passes on both ends for uh, buckets for both sides. All right, this is Quentin Cabrera giving it to Schmuel high on the right, trying to get away from Camrath. Floats one up in the lane, scores. Caleb Schmuel averages 9.2 a game. He had eight the other night in the game at Wanaki, and he gets his first two tonight, four to two now. Beaverdam leads, but it's early. And here is Jake Kirchen giving it now to Calvin. Down, down to the right baseline, there's Cameron. He's gonna drive back up top, leaves it off. And Hurchin launching a three ball, no good for Jake Hurchin. Rebound grabbed by Call and calls straight ahead as he lets traffic go by and now feeds. He feeds Schmuel. They're saying it over and back. I don't know. I, I thought he was over the, the line cleanly. And you can probably hear the locals groaning about that one, didn't like it. Uh, again, you know, it, 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 it's tough in real time, but I thought he was over <laughs> cleanly. And Ninja's nodding his head too. But anyways, we move on. 15.44 to go in the first half. It's right now a 4-2 game in favor of the Golden Beavers. Nice pass to the right block. There's Johnson again, guarded by Jens. Bounce pass. They go right side into the corner. Schwefel there. Underhands it out. Hurchin. Bounce pass right back into the block. Johnson looking to make a move. Into the lane he goes. He is. Well, he scores. He went right over Jens. Jens, I mean, trying to play Sticky D. And, and obviously, Johnson has a height advantage on Jens. But uh, he still scored over Jens. Four to four, we are tied up as we are just about three minutes into the contest on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Left side, there's Jens in the block, guarded by Schwefel. Jens into the lane now, up and under, shot is off the glass, no good, and Johnson has the defensive rebound for the Goslings. Watertown trying to take the lead on this possession. And here is Camrath kicking it out to the left elbow. They go right back to the left side, Jake Hurchin, looking into Johnson, whips it right corner, Camrath a three ball, it is in and out, no good. And Jens tipped the rebound to Schmuel and he's gonna bring it back the other way for the Golden Beavers. As we are now three and a half minutes into the contest. This is the aforementioned Eli Titus kicking it out, three pointers on the way, no good in the rebound for Camrath. And now we've got a whistle as Goslings were heading back up the floor and a foul here on the Golden Beavers. Parker still beginning set to check in for Beaverdam, a 5'9 sophomore as Eli Titus, the 5'11 senior, heads to the bench, gets a nice hand. Something he'll always remember, getting the start on senior night. All right, Watertown trying to untie the game 
And this is Jake Urchin in the right corner, guarded there by Cabrera pretty closely. Bounce pass up to the top of the key. Schwepel looking into the paint. There is Johnson, kicks it back out on a bounce pass. Camrath up top. Schwefel back to Camrath as he's going baseline, kicks it to the corner on the left side. Urchin back to Johnson. Johnson one hands it up and scores. Well, I tell you what, Ethan Johnson using his height advantage to uh, to his advantage right now. He's got six points. He's got all six points for the Goslings. They lead it by two. And Schmuel floats one up, hits the back iron. It's no good, and Johnson the defensive rebound. 13.40 to go in the first half. On the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, Goslings have the early two-point lead, 6-4. to four. Calvin Hurchin, bounce pass. Johnson inside the free line, bobbled it and got it back. He's being worked on again by Jens. Now Jake Hurchin over to Schwefel, right sideline, up top again. Calvin around the horn. Left side, Camrath will try a three. Off the back rim, no. And leaping for the rebound was Call, and he got fouled. I think they're going to get Johnson here, trying to rip that one away from JT, who jumped in there to get that loose change. More subs coming in now. Cam Ron Mendoza, 6'3", junior, checking in for Beaverdam. Cameron Kranz, six-foot sophomore in for Watertown. As we have 13.08 to go in the opening stanza on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Watertown six, Beaverdam four. Golden Beavers have the Rock Gens into the lane. Kicks it out. Schmuel faked a three. Schwefel got there defensively. Schmuel left side into the lane again. Off the glass, missed the shot. Rebound call. Was able to take it away from Camrath. Now JT working that. Area near the top of the silo, giving it to Jack Jens. Feeds Mendoza, underhands it back out beyond the arc. Jens to call in the corner, three ball on the way. It's no good. Rebound is pulled down by Braden Schmidt, 6'4", sophomore that had just checked in for Coach Chad Hayes in Watertown. All right, 12 and a half to go until intermission. 6'4", ball game. And here's Schwepel. Sidesteps the defender, goes in for two. What a move by Schwepel. Brett Schwefel averages about 10 points a game, and boy, that was a nifty move. Eight to four, Watertown on top. Now we've got a whistle as Stoby was on the dribble. And we'll check it out here, a Watertown foul, it would appear. It's going to go on Calvin Hurchin. Our first email of the night says, just checking in from the field house tonight. Could use a few more fans for senior night. Go Beaver Den, that's from our friend Dan. Dan McDermott, again, you can send us an email tonight, sports at dailydodge.com, sports at dailydodge.com. Let us know where you're checking in from, your name. The Stobie misses a three from the left corner. Here come the Goslings off the miss. Don't be bashful. Here's a baseline move, Schwefel, bounce pass, kicked around the horn, up to the top of the key, a three ball. Yes, it's good for Jake Hurchin. And a timeout, Beaver Dam, this timeout brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family. And we've got a timeout, Beaver Dam, with 11.52 remaining in the first half. Back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. It's the President's Day sales event at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam. Hello, this is Brent Reed, treating everyone like a dignitary with $10,000 off in-stock 22 Ram 1500 Big Corn Crew Cabs or finance for 1.9%. Brand new Jeep Compass Trailhawks with all the goodies under forty grand, and take $4,000 off in-stock Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 4xEs, not to mention the governmental tax credit. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. Is it time to update the bathroom? Then it's time to head to Hometown Glass and Improvement of Beaver Dam. Hometown has a full complement of Vasco shower enclosures. Hometown Glass makes your selection of enclosures easy, and they provide hassle-free installation. When you purchase a Basco shower enclosure, your expectations will be exceeded. Hometown Glass promises you a classy, elegant, and luxurious centerpiece for your bathroom. Hometown Glass and Improvement, Highway 33 East of Beaver Dam, on the web at hometownglass.com. Back to live action here inside the field house. Stobie for three at the top of the key. Line drive three is good for Parker Stobie. Badly needed three for the Golden Beavers. It's now 11 to seven in favor of Watertown on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. And here's Schmidt kicking it up top. On the dribble was Kranz, gets rid of it. 
And now Hirschen gives it to Schwepel, spinning into a double team, maintained possession. Oh, the ball was actually kicked out of bounds by a Beaverdam defender. So the Goslings will inbound on the far sideline, right in front of the Beaverdam bench. And here's a floater in the lane. It's no good for Schwefel, but he got fouled. Well, no fear for Brett Schwefel. Just took it right down Wisconsin Avenue and got fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. All expenses paid. As the foul was called on Mendoza, that's his first, and team fouls are even at two apiece. First free throw is good for Schwefel. Make it a 12-7 Watertown lead. Good start here on the road for the Goslings as the second free throw is good. I mentioned it at the outset. Watertown with that huge upset win at DeForest on Tuesday night. They come in feeling pretty darn good about themselves. And, you know, Beaver Dam's playing well, too, with the last couple of games. Here's a three for E.J. Salatel, and he missed it off the rim, but an offensive rebound, Parker Blank. So a couple of new faces out there for the Golden Beavers that had just checked in, Blank and Salatel. Right now, Jen's at the top of the arc. A little hesitation move. He's going to go down low. Ran into Kranz. Now Mendoza looking into the block. There's Blank. Hook shot is up over the defender. It's no good. And the rebound pulled down by Braden Schmidt. 10-25 and counting left until intermission. And we've got an offensive foul on the Goslings, which will give it back to Beaverdam. Subs in for Watertown. Let's see, looks like uh, Johnson and Hurchin, Calvin Hurchin, both returning for head coach Chad Hayes. Chad Hayes t- taking over the program this year. He, uh, one of his former players from Johnson Creek when he coached there is his varsity assistant, Cole Ducklow. He's talking to them uh, prior to the game. Here's Stobie for three. That one's off the rim, no. Rebound is going to be grabbed by Kranz. And then, uh, oh, we've got a whistle as... There was contact on the way up the floor. Yeah, Cole Ducklow played for Chad Hayes when he coached uh, back at Johnson Creek. Another name familiar to a lot of folks in the area on that Watertown coaching staff is Ron Miller. Ron Miller, of course, longtime coach at Dodgeland High School in Juneau, and he's been a friend of ours for a long time here at the radio station. And always good to see Ron. I went up and shook his hand before the game tonight. He was, I think he was surprised to see me. He goes, you're still doing this? And I said, no, you're still doing this? <laughs> Anyways, we play on here. Watertown with the 13-7 lead and possession. Now, Ron's a great guy. and Like I said, we got a lot of friends. And, and we talk about this being maybe a rivalry game, but it's you know what? we got a lot of friends in Watertown as the whistle blows. Watertown Athletic Director Jamie Kep, he does a fantastic job, and he's been so, so great to us over the years because we go down to Watertown for a lot of games. Uh, Beaver Dam Watertown games, they host playoff games as well, and they've always treated us so very nicely down there. We appreciate it. All right, bounce pass to Johnson, right block. Sends it right back up top. Taken there by Kranz. Kranz to the free throw line, one hands it out. Here's Jay Kirchin leaving it off for Camrath. Reese Camrath into the lane. The pass was tipped out of bounds. I think it's going to stay on this end. It will. And Reese Camrath, of course, the son of Benji Camrath, Watertown football coach, and I mentioned this last time that I said, when I see Reese Camrath out there, it makes me feel old because I was broadcasting his dad when I started doing this in 1997. Three ball is good for Jake Hirsch. He's got a couple of threes now. 16 to seven, that's right, Watertown's in front by nine. John Deere Horicon works scoreboard as we approach the nine minute mark and counting of the first half. Nice pass, Mendoza to Stobie. Missed it high off the glass from the right side. And the rebound was grabbed by Calvin Hurchin. He's gonna spot up for three at the other end. It's off the rim, no, and the rebound for Caleb Schmuel. Slow start offensively tonight for Beaver Dam. Credit Watertown, playing pretty good defense, but you know, that has been a bit of an issue. You think back, there's a nice pass to Mendoza in the lane, Stobie feeds him. And Cameron Mendoza scores to make it 16 to nine. Still a seven point Gosling lead, but it was a gorgeous pass. Yeah, th- that has been an issue over the last, is call knocks the ball out of bounds. I think I talked about it a little bit, maybe uh, on Tuesday night with head coach Tim Ladrin about, you know, Beaver Dam has had a tendency uh, to, to start slowly over the last few weeks. Uh, the game against Wanakee, they were, they, they started, uh, they had a pretty good start. And they were right there the whole time. but. 
you know, the game against DeForest, a couple other games that they lost where they, they started slow. And here's Camrath draining a long two. That's a long two for Reese Camrath. But yeah, I mentioned it earlier. I, I was broadcasting his dad when he played football at Mayville High School in uh, 1997, 98 when I started doing this. And now, now I'm broadcasting his son. So I guess I've been around a while. And there's a whistle. We're going the other way. Offensive foul on the Golden Beavers. And Benji was a heck of an athlete. He was fun to watch. And, of course, he went on to play college ball at the University of Minnesota up in my hometown of Minneapolis. Eight minutes and counting left in the first half. On the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, it's 18-9 to Watertown. They've got, uh, they had possession. And looks like we're going the other way now as they blow the whistle and check this one out. This called on Camrath, his first team's fourth, 18 to nine. Watertown on top. Long way to go on this one though. If you're a Beaver Dam fan, don't panic. If you're a Watertown fan, you're liking the start. Trying to pick up where they left off on uh, Tuesday at DeForest. Jens faked a three at the top of the key. He's gonna drive into the lane, bounce pass out beyond the yard. Now Cabrera goes left baseline, sends it up top. Quick touch pass over to Stovey for three. Off the rim, no. Rebound, and look out, we've got a collision as Jake Hurchin hit the deck and a foul on the Golden Beavers, which will be their sixth of the first half. Second personal on JT Call, it would appear. Parker Blank returning to the floor for the Golden Beavers. On this senior night, 2023. Watertown with possession and the lead. Calvin Urchin up to Jake. Jake Urchin now over to Schwefel, high on the left. And now a little lob pass to the free throw line. That's a Brady Shower that had checked in. Shot is up, no good off the rim. Rebound for Blank, and Blank brings it across the timeline. Feeds Parker Stoby. Left side dish, Jens open for three, here it comes, bullseye. Jack Jens from downtown Beaverdam, and it's 18 to 12. So with that, the Golden Beavers are within six. 6.45 and counting left in the first half. Glad you're with us tonight, Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. Simulcasting, Mike Tronson with you. Justin Wilski and Kyra Wilski helping me out tonight. And so are Toast and Ember on site tonight as we had a whistle and another foul. Ethan Johnson will head to the free throw line. Ethan Johnson been averaging about 10, 11 points a game this season. and As I mentioned, with that height advantage, uh, he can exploit and use that to his advantage as the first free throw is no good. He'll get one more. Right now a six-point game in favor of the Goslings, and second one's off the rim, no good. Rebound Cabrera, and he was just about to fall out of bounds underneath the basket, he saved it. All right, Beaver Dam within six here. This is Schmuel, faked a three on the right side, into the lane, floats it up, missed it short, tried to get his own rebound, it's out of bounds, and last touch they say by Schmuel. So it's gonna go back to Watertown. Got an email here, it says, uh, hi Mike, always enjoy your announcing. Go Golden Beavers from Ty and Laura Gerber from DeForest. Hey Ty, Laura, thank you very much. Appreciate you checking in tonight. There's a steal, back the other way, Blank. He's gonna take it in for a layup, high off the rim, it won't go, offensive board, and then Johnson from behind blocking Stoby, who gives him a, a poke and says, hey, nice job. <laughs> I mean, Johnson with that 6'8 frame, with a monster rejection from behind. Beaverdam keeps the basketball though. And they get it into Schmuel for a reload. Now here's Blank, free throw line extended. Left side, out to Cabreda. One hands it to Jens, fake to three, top of the silo. Now Cool has it, Cool to the free throw line, kicks it back out, Jens into the lane. Sends it to the corner, there's Cabreda for three. It's high off the rim, no. And the defensive rebound for Brady Schauer, the 6'2 junior. Now sports at dailydodge.com. Thanks again to Ty and Laura for the nice email. We'll get to some more here momentarily. We're here all night. We've got time. Hope you're having fun on a Friday evening. No place I'd rather be. All right, Watertown 18, Beaverdam 12. And that's Schmuel playing defense on Shower. Here's Schwefel, right elbow three. Got it. Brett Schwefel knocking the trifecta down. He now has seven points, and it's 21 to 12. So right 
Back to a nine-point Watertown advantage on the John Deere Horicon works forward. Blank through traffic, kicks it out. Schmuel into the lane. Schmuel double team, bounce pass up top of the key. Stoby faked the three, feeds Blank. Blank out high on the right for Cabreda. Now to Schmuel, step back three, got it! NBA three for Caleb Schmuel. He shoots 36.6% from behind the arc. That gives him five in this game. He averages almost 10 a game. 21-15, Beaver Dam within six. Bounce pass down to the baseline. Head and shoulder fake. They get it. Weak side, there's Johnson missing the shot off the glass. Rebound tipped right to Shower, who missed the shot. Tipped the rebound to the corner. Now it's knocked loose, and will it be saved? And that's an over and back, they're saying, on water. <laughs> I mean, a wild sequence there. I was having trouble keeping up with it. But it will be Beaver Dam basketball. <laughs> Oh, man, they were fighting hard for that. Stoby now settled things down just a little bit as he brings it back into the front court. 420 and counting left in the first half. Sidearm pass, cool the left corner. I should say Schmuel there, giving it to uh, Cabreda. Now they go to Cabreda again. Right corner, three, a rainbow three is no good. Rebound for Schwefel as he got the defensive carom. And Schwefel at the other end. Like a, looks like a 2-3 zone here defensively for Beaver Dam. This is a pass up to Calvin Hurchin. Now back to Jake Hurchin. Post lob, right side. Fighting through is Schmidt. Braden Schmidt gets, oh, he traveled. Braden Schmidt trying to make a move on the right block. And as he spun, they called him for a travel with 3.45 left to play in this first half. Beaver Dam with possession, but right now the Golden Beavers trailing the Goslings 21 to 15 on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Schmuel, left corner, Stoby, bounce pass, intercepted by Jay Kirchin, and he got it to his teammate Schmidt. Nice job defensively there to intercept that pass. And now a timeout, Watertown, brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family. It's a 30 second timeout. We'll keep it right here. We want to thank our sponsors tonight, our presenting video sponsors, Columbus Family Dental, Hometown Glass and Improvement, and the Beaver Dam Unified School District. Tonight's game is also brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Air Care, Richards Insurance, Landmark Credit Union, Jerry's Automotive, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Ergo Bank, Great Harvest Bakery Cafe, Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly, Preferred Dental Partners, Slumberland, Kraft Heinz, Silica for your home and Summit Ford. Another email to get to. This one says, Brett and Jody, the rechecks, enjoying the broadcast from home. Congratulations, seniors, and good luck, Beavers. They say, thanks, Mike, for your enthusiasm and always neutral broadcasts. And as always, thanks to all the sponsors. We know that is not possible without their support, and you are correct, Brett and Jody. We thank all of our partners, all the sponsors that make this possible. They are the reason that we are doing this and that we are able to do this. Again, sports at dailydodge.com if you want to send me an email tonight. Watertown after the timeout with possession. Three ball in and out, no good for Calvin Urchin. E.J. Salatel leaps for the defensive rebound. 21-15, Beaver Dam trailing by six. And here's a three for Jens. It is off the mark, no good. Hit the rim and then rebound grab by Kranz. 2.48 and counting left to go until the break. I joked with Coach Tim Ladrin at Beaverdam, and I said, you clean up pretty well. He's got his shirt and tie on tonight, got the uh, the sport coat on. Yeah, in honor of senior night, I suppose. I told him, you, you clean up pretty well, buddy. Tongue in cheek, of course. Three ball, Jake Kirchin buries it. Jake Kirchin with his third three-point basket. 24 to 15. Watertown by nine with 2.12 to go in the half. Here is Schmuel into the lane. Floats one up, missed it short off the front of the rim. Rebound was tipped right to Calvin Hurchin. Of course, uh, Tim Ladrin knows a thing or two about Watertown. Got his coaching start there, of course. and His mother-in-law still does the scorebook at Watertown basketball games. And 
We didn't really we didn't talk too much about it tonight. We hit, we have in the past when these two teams have have gotten together. I didn't I didn't ask him a whole lot about that aspect of it tonight, but it's not it's nothing that he and I haven't hashed over a few times. His Watertown connection, but I, but don't don't get me wrong. He Tim Ladrin bleeds green and gold now. He does, and he has for a while. And no disrespect to Watertown, of course. Here's Salatel into the lane, and we've got a whistle and a foul. And with a minute 33 left to play in the half, Beaver Dam will inbound, trailing by nine, 24-15. That last foul, by the way, was on Schmidt, his first. Schmuel looking over to Jens, faked a three from the top of the silo, over to Stoby, left elbow three, got it! Parker Stoby. Knocks down the three ball. That's his second triple. 24 to 18. Beaver Dam within six on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Offensive foul on Schwefel. Schmuel got down, took the charge on the near sideline, and it goes right back to Beaver Dam. And they've gotten within six a couple of times here in the first half, and see if they can close the gap a little more here as we are 68 seconds away from the buzzer. And Stoby will bring it ahead. Giving it to Schmuel. Thought about a three, didn't take it. And now we've got a whistle. And uh, let's check this foul out. That foul went on Ethan Johnson. It's his second. Team fouls right now are even seven apiece. And Caleb Schmuel, who averages about nine points a game, 55% from the line, he'll step to the charity stripe. He's got five points in the game. Front end of the bonus is good for Caleb. Both teams, as I mentioned, in the bonus now the rest of the way, but that's only 58 and a half seconds left until intermission. 24-19, he can bring the Golden Beavers to within four. Schmuel eyes up the second of two. That one's off the rim. No, and the rebound for Krantz. Gosling's with possession, under a minute to play in the half, and they lead it 24-19 on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Shower, right side into the lane, spins, shot over the rim, too strong, and the rebound for Cabrera. Boy, I tell you what, he did all he could to circle the wagons, just shot it over the rim, and there's a pass that was almost intercepted, and it actually was a turnover. As back the other way comes Jay Kirchner, and he's fouled by Stoby, I believe. And, yep, they're going to get Parker. That's his first. That means Jake Hurchin will head to the free throw line. He's been averaging about eight points a game this season. Sophomore, and the first free throw is good. And you look at this Watertown roster and and one thing you don't see a lot of is upperclassmen, a lot of sophomores and juniors. As the second free throw is no good, Schmuel trying to get the rebound. Now there's a fight for it out near the free throw, and Schmuel on his backside, and he got tied up. They call a jump ball. The arrow says it belongs to the Goslings. You know, Watertown, a fairly young team. I mean, there are some seniors, yes, but a lot of sophomores and juniors on this roster. Inbounding is Kranz on the right baseline. Pump fake. Here's Schmidt. Or Shower, I should say. Over to Hurchin. He misses a three from the right corner. Schmuel the rebound. Throws it ahead. Blank. Two on one the other way if he hurries. And he is fouled hard by Calvin Hurchin, who raced back to deny the layup. Stops the clock with 13.8 seconds left to play in the half. It's 25-19 in favor of the Goslings. And right now, Parker Blank is going to go to the free throw line, and uh, he's been pretty good at the line when he's been there, 80.9%, and right on cue, he makes the first one. Blank got his first career start a couple of weeks ago. He's been uh, quietly moving on up the ranks here, if you will, and the second free throw is no good. Cabrera got the offensive rebound out to Blank again. Blank, left corner pass, Schmuel for three. It's off the mark, way too strong. Rebound to Gosings. They throw it ahead. Camrath catches. Stoby got 
there to play defense, but Camrath muscles in anyways right before the horn and scores. There is the buzzer, and that's the way the first half comes to an end here inside the BDHS Fieldhouse. After 18 minutes of basketball on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, our score is Watertown 27, Beaverdam 20. Stay with us. Our halftime report comes up right after this break. We'll take a four-minute break back in four minutes on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. What's in your kid's lunchbox today? Turkey and bacon on honey whole wheat? Roast beef on sourdough? PB&J on cinnamon chip with bananas? That is bananas, but that's what fresh baked breads from Great Harvest can do for you. Unleash your sandwich ingenuity. So show your kids some lunchbox love with chicken salad on cranberry orange bread, Italian on cheddar garlic bread. Then show everyone your creation at Instagram or Facebook using this hashtag, Great Harvest Bread, the way it ought to be. Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly in Beaver Dam has everything you need to keep your family happy and healthy. From pampered to perfection produce to boar's head deli meats and cheeses, Fox Brothers award-winning brats and certified Angus beef. If it's not certified, it's not the best. Be sure to go online at Fox Bros Piggly Wiggly and find the latest weekly flyer full of savings and follow them on Facebook to learn more about their upcoming events. Shop local and save at Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly in Beaver Dam. Ready, set, Ergo. The game plan is to make banking convenient for you. Ergo Bank has locations in Marquezan and Fox Lake with interactive teller machines in five different communities. And at all locations, speak with a live teller and conduct most in-branch transactions by transferring, withdrawing, or depositing. That's better banking by design. Open 7A to 7P Monday through Friday, 7 to noon on Saturdays. Call them today at 920-398-2336 or visit ErgoBank.com. Ergo Bank, an equal housing lender and member FDIC. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of AirCare in Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our Total Care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's Total Care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. We are committed to serving the customers in our community, to bringing you into our dealership and making the buying process easy, fun, stress-free, and memorable. Thank you for choosing us and voting us Dodge County's best place to buy a new or used vehicle. Stop in today for a test drive and to see how we can help you find the car of your dreams. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest-free financing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. Hi, I'm Josh Schneider with Silica for Your Home. We have a great feature available in our showrooms, our digital price tags. They search the internet every day and allow us to adjust the prices based on our competitors. That ensures you are always getting the best deal. If it finds a lower price, it will automatically change our Silica price in real time. These digital price tags are all about saving you time and money. Shop Silica for Your Home for the best sales, service, and selection. Back inside the BDHS Fieldhouse, Mike Tronson with you on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. Halftime here uh, at this boys basketball clash between the two rivals, Beaverdam and Watertown. And at the break, the Goslings 
on top of the Golden Beavers by the count of 27 to 20. Let's give you the first half individual scoring for Watertown. They were paced in the half by Jake Hurchin. He had 10 points. In fact, he leads all scorers in the game. 10 points for Jake Hurchin, including three three-point baskets. Brett Schwefel had seven points, including one from downtown. Ethan Johnson, he scored the first six points of the game for the Gossings, so he finished the half with six. And Reese Kamrath rounding out the scoring for the Goslings in the first half with four. Meanwhile, on the Beaver Dam side of the ledger, Parker Stobie and Caleb Schmuel, six points each for the Golden Beavers. Stobie had a pair of threes. Schmuel also had a three in there. Jack Jens had a triple. He finished the half with three. Two points for Quentin Cabreda. Cameron Mendoza with two, and Parker Blank chipped in a free throw. He finished the half with one. So Beaver Dam with some work to do. 27 to 20. Your halftime score on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard as right now Watertown with the lead over Beaver Dam at the break. Our game tonight brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Columbus Family Dental, Hometown Glass and Improvement, and the Beaver Dam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Air Care, Richards Insurance, Landmark Credit Union, Jerry's Automotive, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Ergo Bank, Great Harvest Bakery Cafe, Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly, Preferred Dental Partners, Slumberland, Kraft Heinz, Silica for Your Home, and Summit Ford. Now tomorrow we have got a big time double header for you on Daily Dodge TV and simulcasting on 1430 ESPN. Tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock, the Beaver Dam girls basketball team takes on Monona Grove here in the field house for the Badger East Conference Championship. We'll have it for you at uh, 4 o'clock, the tip-off with our pregame show starting around 3.45. And then part two of the doubleheader will take it across the street to the Beaverdam Family Center. Wade Bates will have the call as the Beaverdam boys hockey team entertains Cedarburg in their first round playoff game. And that game starts at 7.30 tomorrow night, pregame show around 7.15. Both of those games tomorrow. The playoff game and the conference championship game. You can watch them both on Daily Dodge TV or listen to both on 1430 ESPN. That's going to be a lot of fun. We hope you'll join us if you can't make it out to the uh, field house or to the family center. Got a couple of emails to uh, get here. We'll get to those right now. We have a moment here. And hey, the birthday boy, Mark Gutnecht, checked in here. Says, Congrats, seniors, and go get the Goslings tonight, boys and uh, says we need everyone to get to the field house tomorrow at 4 to cheer on the girls for a conference championship. Cheer loud. But, Mark, happy birthday. Hope it was a good one for you. I, uh, I found out this morning via a very reliable source that it was your birthday. And, no, he confirmed. I saw Mark out there in, uh, before the game in the uh, commons area. Mark, happy birthday again. Thanks for the email. Let's see here. Uh, this one's uh, – this is funny. And <laughs> I, I wondered if I'd get this email. It says, this is from Steve Cool. He says, he says, we we too miss watching number five, Marshall Cool. Had to chuckle when you misspoke calling Caleb Schmuel as cool. It, he caught that. And I after I did it, I kind of smirked to myself, thinking, how did I just do that? But you know what? It was a Freudian slip. But Steve caught it. Steve, you caught it. And uh, he says that number five jersey sure brings energy to the game. Wishing the best for this year's seniors. Thanks for the broadcast. Steve, thanks for for emailing in. I'm glad you caught it. I wondered if somebody caught that, and sure enough, you did. All right, again, sports at dailydodge.com if you want to send an email tonight during the second half. Right now we'll take a one-minute break. Back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time-consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richards Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an Auto Owners Insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richards Insurance? 
To find out, call Richards Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. With offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. Yeah, just about ready to start the second half with Watertown in front of Beaver Dam 27 to 20 on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. And for those of you on the radio side listening in that can't see it, in the second half, Beaver Dam goes left to right, and that means Watertown will go right to left. Those of you watching on Daily Dodge TV, you don't need me to tell you that. You can see it. You can also see that Beaver Dam has the ball to start the second half. Here we go. He has another 18 minutes ready to go, and here's Blank. Ball fake into the lane, bounce pass to the baseline. There's Cabrera. Count the layup and a foul. It was a gorgeous, gorgeous pass from Blank to the baseline. Cabrera with the hoop and the harm, and he's got a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. I tell you what, both teams tonight, there have been some really stellar passes, some great assists on both sides, and Cabrera will bury the free throw. Cabrera makes it a 27-23 game. But, boy, we've seen some players on both teams tonight really with some beautiful helpers. Unselfish basketball. There's a kickball. We had a kickball. So they blow the whistle. That's a great start to the half for the Golden Beavers who had some ground to make up. Right now they're within four. But Watertown with possession inbounding on the baseline to my left. Lob passes in. Taken by Jake Hurchin. Over to Schwefel, guarded by Blank. Schwefel to the top of the key, out to Calvin Hurchin now, up between the rings, right side pass, free ball. Ooh, it is no good for Camrath, but he got bumped, and he's going to get three free throws. So Camrath gets fouled on the three-point attempt. He goes to the line now for not one, not two, but three from the charity stripe. First of three is good. 28-23 Goslings. Two more coming up for Reese. And the second one, Money. Watertown fans liking that. There are a bunch of them sitting right near me here in the bleachers. 17-25 left of the game. We're opening minute here of this second half. Third and final free throw is good. He got them all. So Camrath making it 30-23. to And just like that, the lead is back to seven for Watertown on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Blank. Hesitation move. He goes left baseline underneath the basket. Whips it out. Cabrera on the elbow into the lane. And as he went into the lane, there was contact. Somebody got him. Let's uh, see who they're pointing at here. And they're, they're actually going to get Reese Camrath, his second. Cabrera to inbound. Finds Stoby for three on the right side. It's off the rim. No good. Rebound into the corner. Last touch, I believe, by the Goslings. Oh, no, they're saying it went off of Cabrera. Well, Cabrera was fighting for it. So was Kranz. And from my vantage point, it looked like uh, it went off of Blue. But, nope, the officials are a lot closer than I am. I'm 125 feet away, and they're right there. So we'll go with what they say. One minute gone by, second half. 30-23, to 23, Watertown looking to add to the lead. Nice post feed. Kranz trying to go back door, and it's out of bounds. Last touched. By the Golden Beavers, somebody got it. might have been Blank that got the hand on it. Camrath will do the inbounding duties. And he finds Jake Kirchen. Back to Reese and Camrath to the free throw line. Sends it out. Schwefel has it. Looking over to Calvin Hurchin. Right back to Jake. And now Jake Hurchin feeds Camrath again. One hands it to Schwefel, top of the bubble. He ran into a double team. Fighting through it. Now in the left corner, there's Camrath to the block. Floats went up, missed it short, got his own rebound, put back. That won't go off the rim. And Jens with a defensive board for the Golden Beavers throws it ahead. And then Blank was not able to handle the outlet pass near his own bench. Lost it on the far sideline, out of bounds into the bench. And after all of that, Watertown is going to get it back. 
leading by seven on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. A minute and 40 seconds into the second half. Ball's knocked out of bounds and went off of the Golden Beavers, they say. Kranz will inbound. Near sideline, right at the midcourt stripe. Gets it to Calvin Hurchin. Right side pass, Schwepel inside the bubble. They go left side now. Calvin Hurchin passed a three and thought he was going to take it. Now he takes a return feed over to the right side. Three ball in the corner. Got it. That is Kranz. And it's a 10-point Gosling lead, 33-23 on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, 15-48 and counting. Left to go in the second half. Jens in the lane, up and under, shot is in, uses the glass, banks it home. Jack has got five in the game, 33-25. Golden Beavers cut the deficit down to eight. And there's a bad pass stolen. Here's a two on one, sidestep and the defender, Schmuel finishes with a left hand. What a bucket for Caleb. Off the steal, nifty sidestep. 33-27, so Beaver Dam's got the deficit down to six. Another pass intercepted, three on one the other way. Blank, left side, misses it. Cabrera got the rebound, missed the putback, and then the rebound to Stolby, who then fires it up to Schmuel. Pass to Blank in the right block. He shoots off the glass, it won't go. And the rebound this time for Jake Urchin. And he got bumped by Cabrera at the center circle. And that's going to stop the clock, 14.57. Left to play in the second half. And we've got a timeout, I believe. This timeout brought to you by our good friends at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family back in one minute. Daily Dodge TV, 14.30 ESPN. It's the President's Day sales event at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam. Hello, this is Brent Reed, treating everyone like a dignitary with $10,000 off in-stock 22 Ram 1500 Big Corn Crew Cabs or finance for 1.9%. Brand new Jeep Compass Trailhawks with all the goodies under forty dollars and take $4,000 off in-stock Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 4xEs, not to mention the governmental tax credit. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. For every, where's the grocery list? I'll go to the store. So you'll fill up my car on the way home? Moment. If it has to do with your life and your money, it's a landmark moment. And Landmark Credit Union is here to help. With free checking accounts that offer you the choice of getting paid dividends on your balance or earning rewards points on your purchases. Opening an account is fast and simple and gives you access to Credit Hub, powered by Savvy Money, which shows your credit score so you can keep your finances healthy. Landmark Credit Union. Visit LandmarkCU.com, insured by NCUA. We continue with live action here inside the Fieldhouse. Watertown basketball leading 33-27. Schwepel to the lane, puts one up, and went off the rim. No good. Rebound for Stoby. Parker Stoby lets traffic go by, sends it to Schmuel. Return feed Stoby. Screen set by Mendoza. Stoby to the left corner for Blank. Blank back to the corner, and that's where Stoby takes it. Return feed into the block for Schmuel, and Schmuel got fouled as he was... Trying to slide his way over to the basket. Clock stopped. We're, uh, we're about three and a half minutes into the second half. Schmuel tossing it in. And Stoby has it. Back to Schmuel at the free throw line. Drives into the lane and floats one up and kind of a line drive floater for Schmuel. But he gets it to go. 33-29, look at that, Beaver Dam with a 6-0 run to get back within four after they were down 10. There's a three ball, no good for Kranz, blank the defensive rebound. Beaver Dam can cut the deficit down even more on this possession. Stoby double teamed right side, fighting through it. Up to blank, top of the key. Out to Stoby, he'll try a three ball, bullseye! Parker Stoby with his third three. We've got a one point game, it's a 9-0 run for Beaver Dam. They were down 10, and now a 9-0 run to get within one. 13-43 and counting left in the ball game. Schwefel out to Calvin Hurchin, guarded there by Stoby. Schmuel working on Jake Hurchin and Schmuel trying to take a charge, but they say nope. 
Going to be a blocking foul on Schmuel. For Schmuel, that's his first. It's the fourth team foul of the half. Watertown with Schwefel now. Driving, kicks it out beyond the arc for Schmidt. Schmidt giving it to Jake Hirsch and whips it to the left corner. There's Schwefel. Drives back to the free throw end, puts on the brakes. And now a little lob pass taken by Jake Hirchin. He goes into the lane, trying to go up and under. Good defense by Schmuel. Pass to the left corner. Schwefel drives, stops near the block, puts the shot up, missed it short. Rebound for Blank. We're just about five minutes into the second half. 33-32. Bieberdam can take the lead here. They're down one, but they've got possession. Schmuel for three in the lead. Yes! And he pumps his fist. Caleb Schmuel. Knocking down the three ball, 35-33, Beaver Dam, and it's a 12-0 run. And well, now the run is over as there's a layup at the other end. Good for Jake Hurchin. We're tied at 35. This is turning into a barn burner. Blank for three, he got one from the right corner. 38-35, Golden Beavers lead on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. 12-25 to go. Here is Johnson, bounce pass up to Calvin Urchin. Left side for Schwefel. Yeah, the intensity picking up here a little bit. Now there's another three ball on the way. That's in and out, no good for Calvin Urchin. Johnson grabbed the offensive rebound and then he got fouled on the floor. But my oh my, Beaverdam was down 10. They went on a 12-0 run to take a two point lead. Watertown ties it and then immediately after that, Another three for the Golden Beavers, who now lead it by three, 12 10 to go. But the ebbs and flows of a game. <laughs> this has been fun to watch here over the last few minutes. Johnson off the inbounds play, count the bucket, and one. Well, you got a 6 8 guy out there, you got to use that to your advantage, and that's exactly what they did. So Ethan Johnson with a chance for an old fashioned three point play. 38 37, and this can actually tie the game if he can knock down. The free throw. He had, he had the first six points of the game for the Goslings tonight. We haven't heard from him until, uh, since then until now. And the free throw's up and it's good. So we are all even at 38 apiece on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Clock running with exactly 12 minutes to go in the game. Mendoza found a seam. There was nobody there on the right side. He goes in for an uncontested layup. Oh, the seas parted and nobody there. So Mendoza with an open lane to the basket. 40 to 38, Golden Beavers. And now a block on Salatel at the other end. <laughs> As I said, the intensity. Pick it up here in this one with 11.45 to go. EJ picked up his first personal. That's the seventh team foul of the half. So Watertown's already in the bonus. And we still have 11.45 left. Yeah, a lot of free throws down the stretch. First one's good. This is Schwefel. He's up to eight points in the game now. Next one's on the way. Off the rim, no good. Crans the rebound, though. Offensive board. He tiptoes the baseline, whips it up top. Here's a three ball. No good. It's short for Calvin Hurchin. Rebound, Blank has it. Two on one the other way. Blank, left side, layup. No, but a foul. That one, I hung on the rim for a second or two. I thought it might drop through. It did not. Calvin Hurchin picking up personal three. Calvin Hurchin with a foul, his third, team's fourth. And here's Parker at the free throw line. Parker blank, that is. And first one is good. That gives him now five points in the game. 41-39, Golden Beavers. One more for Blank. It's up. It's good. Make it 42-39. One possession game. Watertown trailing by three with possession. 11-26 and counting left in the game on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Johnson. Giving it to Jake Kirchen. Now to Schwefel for three. It is good. Brett Schwefel 
from behind the arc. We are tied at 42 on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. And now we've got a whistle. What are we looking at here? Blank. What do we got? We're, uh, Beaver Dam's going to inbound. I'm not sure what that was all about. See anything there, Ninja? I didn't know if there was. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what that was all about. But here is Salatel out to Stoby for three on the right side. Got it! Parker Stoby. He's got four three pointers tonight, including that one 45 42. And ball out of bounds. Last touch by the Golden Beavers. But all of a sudden, back and forth. Kind of a seesaw battle here. Well, if you're enjoying this, join us for that big double header tomorrow. Girls basketball conference championship game and a boys hockey playoff game tomorrow. Back to back for you on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. This is Kranz on the right corner. Around the horn they go. This is Jake Kirchin working the left side, spins into the lane, shoots over Salatel, no good, but EJ got called for contact. 10.28 to go, and at this rate, that's the eighth foul on Beaver Dam. I mean, we're, again, I said it, we're going to have a lot of free throws down the stretch here. Maybe it's a good thing we started early tonight. <laughs> we're going to have a lot of free throws to finish, as the first one is no good for Jake Kirchin. Again, send me an email, sports at dailydodge.com if you want to chime in. We haven't heard from anybody here recently. Email's kind of dried up all of a sudden. Sports at dailydodge.com. Second free throw also in and out, no good. And the rebound for Salatel. 45-42, Beaverdam leads it. On the John Deere, Horicon works score with three on the way. It is off the back rim, no good for Stoby. Johnson clears the glass. Back the other way, Kranz going in right baseline underneath the basket. Out to Camrath, now to Schwefel for three on the elbow. Yes, Brett Schwefel, another three. Timeout. 10.05 to go in the game. Timeout brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family. And it's a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it here. Again, a reminder that tomorrow we've got that doubleheader. First part of the doubleheader tomorrow is the Beaverdam girls basketball team hosting Monona Grove here in the Fieldhouse. That's the Badger East Conference Championship game. Four o'clock for the tip-off. Our pregame show starting around 3.45. And then part two of the doubleheader tomorrow night is the Beaverdam boys hockey team hosting Cedarburg over at the Family Center in their playoff game. And that's a 7.30 puck drop with the pregame show at around 7.15. Both of those games tomorrow, you can watch them on Daily Dodge TV or listen to the radio simulcast on 1430 ESPN. Big day tomorrow for Daily Dodge and 1430. I'll be calling the basketball game tomorrow. Wade Bates will do play-by-play -play of the hockey game. Ninja, you're going to be around for both of them doing video, and Kyra's going to be around doing the radio thing tomorrow. And Toast, you'll be probably around tomorrow too, right? Yeah, she's saying probably. Ember maybe too. We got the whole crew here. This is Salatel. So we're back to action, and there's a whistle as he drew some contact. 9.44 left to play in a tie ball game. 45-45, second personal on Jake Hurchin. Inbounds pass, Stoby right corner, guarded by Schwefel. Man-to-man -man defense, Watertown here. This is Cabrera to the corner. Salatel left side up to Mendoza. Mendoza looking left, looking right. Finds Schmuel top of the key. Over to Cabrera right side. Schmuel tried to set a screen, got a sandwich, and they kick to Mendoza for three. And that one is off the mark and out of bounds. It did not draw iron. And the Watertown student section over there letting him hear about it. 9-18 and counting left in the game. Goslings and the Golden Beavers are knotted in a good one, 45 apiece. DeForest, there's a layup good for Reese Camrath to untie the game, 47-45. DeForest found out you can never overlook anybody in the uh, Badger East on Tuesday night when Watertown went in there and beat them. Three ball at the other end, that's off the rim, no good for Stoby. Rebound, leaping to grab that one was Jake Hurchin. He'll bring it back the other way. 
Bounce pass and hit, hit, I think Schmuel's foot or Salatel's foot, they scramble for it and call a, a they call a jump ball or actually it's gonna be Watertown basketball out of bounds. It's about time they get, they get uh, vendors to come through the stands here at these games. They got hot dogs, they've got uh, popcorn. Why should we have to get up and go to the concession when they'll bring it to us? That's awesome. Here's a three ball for Kranz, no good from the right side. And Schmuel, Mr. Neon Shoes himself, saves that one from going out of bounds. Blank, left side to the corner for Cabreda. One hands it up to Caleb again. Schmuel on the dribble, out to Blank on the bounce pass. He's into the lane. Sidesteps the defender, missed the layup, and Johnson there to easily get the rebound. 47-45, Watertown on top on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Clock running with 8.06 and counting left in this one. Right side, here is Jake Hurchin. Floating one up off the glass, it's too strong. Johnson the rebound, out to Cameron. He'll try a three, it's off the rim, no. And this defensive board for Salatel. Now Mendoza. Little jump stop at the other end, sends it out to Cabreda. Underhands it right back to Mendoza in the left corner. He's worked on there by Johnson. They got a pair of 24s going after each other. Johnson and Mendoza. 7.33 and counting left in this one. What a game this has turned out to be. Salatel spinning. Defender kind of backed off a little bit. Shot is up off the rim, no good. Rebound for the Goslings. Well, you, for, when it was a 10-point Watertown lead there early in the second half, you thought, oh, maybe they're going to start to run away with this. Beaver Dam went on a 12-0 run and got right back into it, took the lead briefly. And look how it is. Schwefel was trying to uh, save a ball for his team by falling out of bounds and throwing it off a Beaver Dam player. It didn't work. So we'll get some substitutes here. Hey, our good friend Taylor Post checked in with an email. Says, go Beavers. We're watching the game from Cincinnati. We have our Midwest Conference Tournament for wheelchair basketball this weekend. Taylor, great to hear from you. And good luck at your tournament. Let us know how you're doing. We'll be on the air tomorrow, too, if you get a, get a chance. Let us know how it's, how it's going. There's a drive. Layup counted and one for Schmuel. Yeah, good luck in Cincinnati, Taylor. That's a city I've never been to. I have to get out there sometime to Cincinnati. The foul was called on Schmidt, his second, team's sixth. Three throws up, it's good. So a three-point play for number five. That's Caleb Schmuel, 48-47. Beaverdam vaults back in front by one. 6.40 and counting left in this game. And don't go anywhere, folks. You stay by your radio, stay by your device. We're going to go right down to the wire, it would appear. Some bang for your buck on a Friday night. Calvin Hurchin, left of the circle. Sends it up to his brother, Jake. Over to the right side. Back to Kranz. Over to Jake Hurchin again. On the elbow. Now here's Kranz looking right side. Camrath has it up to Jake Hurchin. Fakes the three, top of the key. Schmuel's all over him. Trying to fight and get away from Schmuel. Ball was knocked loose by Schmuel as they both went down. Hurchin and Schmuel. Mendoza got the deflection. Back the other way. Cam into the lane. Floater is good for Cam. Mendoza, 50 to 47. Still a one possession game. Beaver down by three. And here's an outlet pass. Jake Hurchin, no. Missed the layup, but he got fouled as Watertown going for the home run play there. And because Hurchin had beaten the defense back. And Blank going to pick up the foul, and they're just checking on Hurchin. He's yeah, now he's hurting a little bit here. He, he's on his, he's on the seat of his pants on the floor. He's holding his right knee or right leg there. And he got up initially, and then he kind of slid back down. And they're going to check on him. Let's hope he's okay here. This comes with 5:47 remaining in the ball game. On the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, it's 50 to 47 in favor of Beaverdam. And right now they're working on Jake Hurchin, who's sitting upright on the floor over by the basket to our left. 
Training staff out there checking on that right leg. Yeah, he, he was, you know, it was evident right away because he was kind of slumped over a little bit and, and he was on his feet, but then he, after getting up or trying to stand up, he kind of slid down. It, there was obviously some discomfort. Tell you what, let's take a break. One minute break. Back after this, Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. It's the President's Day sales event at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam. Hello, this is Brent Reed, treating everyone like a dignitary with $10,000 off in-stock 22 Ram 1500 Big Corn Crew Cabs or finance for 1.9%. Brand new Jeep Compass Trailhawks with all the goodies under forty dollars and take $4,000 off in-stock Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 4xEs, not to mention the governmental tax credit. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. Hi, my name is Michelle, and I'm the plant manager for the Beaver Dam Kraft Heinz plant. I'm excited to share with you that we are rolling out new schedules to allow people more time with their families. Come meet me and my team and let us tell you about the exciting changes we are making to our schedules and our great benefits. Please go to careers.crafthinds.com, search by Beaver Dam, and see all the opportunities we have available. We believe family time is important. Our new schedule will allow you to have a schedule that works for you and your family. All shifts are 12 hours with up to three to four days off per week. We offer shift differentials and premiums for weekend work at Kraft Heinz. Back to live action, Schwefel at the free throw line makes the first one, misses the second, rebound for the Golden Beavers, 50 to 48. Golden Beavers lead the Goslings by two on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, 535 and counting left in the game, another whistle. And I want to give you an update, uh, good news for Watertown fans, and that is that Jake Hurchin, the injured player, was able to get up when we went away to break, and he was able to walk off the uh, floor under his own power, and. That's a good sign. We hope he's okay. And that, that's a good sign when you can get up and walk under your own power. And right now, Blanks at the free throw line with his team nursing a two-point lead, 534 to go. And the front end of the bonus is good for Parker Blank. Six points in the half, seven in the game for Parker. All coming from the free throw line with the exception of that three-point shot that he hit earlier. And the next free throw is also good. 52-48, still anybody's game. Five and a half to go. And as I said, don't leave your radio or your Daily Dodge TV device. Both these teams have been playing really well as of late. Talked about that. Turnaround jumper, Schwefel knocking it down. Brett Schwefel having a nice game tonight. He's got 17 points. 10 here in the second half. Two point game, 52-50. to Beaver Dam with possession and a two-point advantage. Pass was tipped and by a Watertown defender. Beaver Dam will have to inbound on the baseline to our right. Exactly five minutes to go. Call's going to inbound. JT gets it in. Jack Jens. Traveling violation on Jens. He was open on the right side. A little head, head fake. Like he maybe was going to do a three ball or something, and he took off, and that is traveling. Watertown with a chance to tie the game on this possession or take the lead with a three-point play. Camrath whips it right side. Johnson guarded by Mendoza. Whips it to the corner. Three ball, Schwefel off the rim. It's no good. Mendoza, the defensive rebound. Here's Cam into the front court. Gives it to Blank, left side, over by his bench. Feeds JT Call. Call, who averages 12 points a game, he has been held scoreless tonight. But others have picked up the slack, and that's what you need to do. When one or more of your top scores struggling a little bit, other guys need to pick up the slack, and that's what they're, they're doing tonight here. This is Mendoza. Bounce pass out to Blank. Blank's been one of them. Mendoza's had a pretty good game. Schmuel's had a heck of a game. Three ball! Oh, look at that! Right on cue, JT Call hits a three, and that's his first bucket. So his ears must have been ringing when he heard me talking about him from up here. 55-50 to in a timeout Watertown. Brought to you by the good folks at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family. And is this a full timeout or... Yeah, it's a full timeout. 
Uh, let's take a one-minute break on Daily Dodge TV, 1430 ESPN. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their Spirit Pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center, WI.com, and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of AirCare in Beaverdam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our Total Care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's Total Care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. All right, Watertown inbounding, 350 and counting left in the game. And on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, there's a LEU pass and a layup for Schwefel and a foul to Boone. Well, right off the inbounds, they go on the alley-oop to Schwefel, who scores and gets fouled in the process. Three-point opportunity for Schwefel. He's having a heck of a game tonight. And goes to the line to try and bring his team within two. And he does so as he knocks down the free throw. 55-53 is our score. Beaverdam up by two on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Here we go. Final 334 to go in a two-point game. What more could you ask for on a Friday night? JT call. Baseline drive. Sends it up. To the left elbow, three ball. Yes, Jens! Are you kidding me? Jack Jens from the parking lot, and it's 58-53. We had a kick ball as Watertown bringing it back the other way. It's going to stay with the Goslings. Jack Jens, 25.8% from behind the arc, and that's his second three of the game, and it's a huge one. Extends the lead to five with three minutes and change left to go. All right, here's Calvin Hurchin. He thought about a three, didn't take it on the right elbow. Bounce pass to Johnson. Bobbled it, though, from the block, but it's saved by Schwefel down there in the corner. Plenty of time here. Water down to down only five. There's, oh, tip ball, though. Stolen by Call. He tipped it right to himself. Forced the turnover. Here's Stobie inside the timeline. Sending it right wing for Call up to Mendoza, top of the silo. Side arms it over to Jens. Jens directing traffic from the left side. Right over by the Beaverdam bench. Tim Ladrin, head coach, watching there intently. Now call on the right side. Driving to the top of the key. Gives it to Jack Jens again. Jens. Into the lane. Over to call. Call. And Beaverdam here, just, you know, they can be patient. They don't have to force anything. Got a five point lead. They're running some clock. We're down to 2.08 to go in this one. And Cole got tied up. Calvin Hurchin tied him up, forced the jump ball, but the arrow says it belongs to the Golden Beavers. Nice job by Hurchin there just to reach in and force the tie up. Jens on the near sideline, bounce pass in, Blank has it. Just inside the arc. Takes off into the lane, kicks it to the left side, Mendoza right up top for Call. And back around the horn for Stobie up near the big B and D at the center of the floor. Ran into a defender, lost it, got it back. A minute 48 and counting left in the game. Call is going to go baseline left side. Shot is up. Might have been partially blocked, and the ricochet was grabbed by Kranz. Here come the Goslings. They weathered the storm there. Can they score on this end now to close the gap? Schwefel has it. Out to Calvin Hurchin high on the right, trying to go to Johnson in the block. Johnson, bounce pass, Schwefel has it. Minute 26 to go. Schwefel shot is in and out. No good. Mendoza the box out and rebound. And a foul on the Goslings with a minute 20 to go. 58-53. Beaverdam on top. And as we go back to the other end, Mendoza 
will step to the free throw line. Boy, free throws certainly would go a long way in helping your cause late in this one. Mendoza, 76.7% at the free throw line, and he missed that front end of the bonus. Johnson, the rebound. That's another big rebound off the miss there, and Watertown again within five here. Plenty of time, 72 seconds left. They got time here. And Schwefel is fouled, and Brett Schwefel will go back to the free throw line. He's up to 20 points in this game. Big night for Brett Schwefel. Big second half here, too. And the first free throw is good. 21 points in the game for Schwefel. A minute and 10 seconds left on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. 58-54. Beaverdam leads. One more free throw for Schwefel. He can try and make it a one-possession game. It's up, and it's good. 22 points tonight for Brett Schwefel, 58-55. Beaverdam with a three-point lead and possession. And Schmuel brings it across the timeline, or it was knocked out of his hands, but he got it back, no over and back. One minute to go. Oh, and then he did lose it out of bounds. Oh, my goodness. Look out, Watertown basketball. Gosling's down... Only by three here, 58.6 to play. And we're just getting some personnel set here, but as I said before, the ebbs and flows of this game have been something else. Here is Jake Hurchin giving it to Kranz. Round to the left side, there's Calvin Hurchin guarded by Jens. 46 seconds left. Watertown with possession. Oh, they just lost it, Calvin Hurchin. Could not handle the pass on the near sideline. Lost it out of bounds. And that's a huge break for the Golden Beavers who maintain the three-point lead and 44.1 seconds to go. Schmuel's double teamed in the backcourt. Bounce pass to Stoby. Trying to bring it up and hit it. Knocked away from behind by Schwefel. Two on all the other way. Layup. Yes for Calvin Hurchin. And it's 58-57. Beaverdam by one, 23.4 seconds left, and now a whistle. And this is going to put JT Call at the line. Jake Hurchin called for his third personal. Call at the line to shoot. A bonus. One plus one. Free throw's good. First one. 59-57. 23.4 seconds left. Trying to make it a three-point game. Call second free throw. Good. Three-point game. 60-57. to Beaverdam leads. Watertown with possession. And now a timeout. Called by the Goslings. This time out brought to you by our good friends at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family. Well, the Beaverdam Unified School District would like to thank parents and families for their active engagement in the education of their children. BDUSD staff are working hard to make the best of each and every opportunity they have to serve your children. Your partnership in that effort is critical to student success. The BD fam better together. Tonight's game brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Columbus Family Dental, Hometown Glass and Improvement, and the Beaverdam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Air Care, Richards Insurance, Landmark Credit Union, Jerry's Automotive, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Ergo Bank, Great Harvest Bakery Cafe, Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly, Preferred Dental Partners, Slumberland, Kraft Heinz, Silica for your home, and Summit Ford. Mike Tronson with you inside the field house. What a game this has been, and we now have 21.2 seconds remaining. 21.2 seconds left on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. It's Beaverdam 60, Watertown 57. 
Watertown inbounding after the timeout. If they get a quick two, you don't necessarily need a three right away. We'll see what they do. This is Kranz. To Calvin Urchin for three in a tie game. It's off the back rim, no. Rebound tipped to Schwefel. Back to Calvin Urchin, 10 seconds. Over to Schwefel. Spins, giving it to Jake Urchin. Back to Schwefel for three. It is good with three seconds left. A timeout. Beaver Dam. Schwefel just hit a three to tie it. At 60, the clock is stopped with 2.9 seconds left to play in regulation. Beaverdam did get the timeout, but oh my goodness, 60 to 60. The rainbow triple from Schwefel with defenders right there. And we are tied and we're 2.9 seconds away from overtime. Oh my. Unbelievable. And Schwefel now, I'm going to need a calculator to add up all his points tonight. I mean, he has had a monster game. I've got him for 25 points, including 18 here in the second half, and none bigger than that three ball he just hit right there. Wow. <laughs> well, hey, we might get more of the same tomorrow. I know Ninja's over here. Yep, the heart's beating fast right now, isn't it, Justin? I tell you. And we've, we're going to do this all over again tomorrow. In fact, Ninja, you're doing this twice tomorrow. <laughs> You've got basketball and hockey. 2.9 seconds left in regulation. On the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, Beaverdam and Watertown tied at 60. Beaverdam will get it in in the backcourt, try and get it up the floor for a shot. And what do we have now? Another timeout? Well, apparently that wasn't enough. Yeah, now we got a 30-second timeout. And you know what? Just in case you were wondering, the timeouts are brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family. Tomorrow afternoon, it's the Badger East Conference Girls Basketball Championship game. Beaverdam hosting Monona Grove will be on the air with our John Deere pregame show at about uh, 345 tomorrow, tip time at 4 o'clock. And then tomorrow night, the Beaverdam boys hockey team WIAA playoff game. They'll host Cedarburg over at the Family Center. That's a 7.30 start, 7.15 for the pregame show. Both of those games tomorrow on Daily Dodge TV and simulcasting on 1430 ESPN. All right, here we go. 2.9 seconds left in regulation. Beaverdam, Watertown tied at 60. Call will inbound for Beaverdam. He runs the baseline. Gets it in. And oh, he can't. He tried to get it to Schmuel. And it was off the mark and sailed out of bounds. And now Watertown with 2.4 seconds left will inbound. And they're going to have a chance to win this in regulation. Oh, wow. I mean, emotions in this game have just, they can change on a dime. Watertown's going to get to inbound. And they're not in the backcourt. They're going to be inbound in the front court. They've got 2.4 seconds to get a shot off, see if they can win this thing in regulation. All right, Kranz will inbound for the Goslings. Looking to get it in. Finds Calvin Hurchin for three at the horn. No, but was there a foul? Let's see. The horn has sounded. There is a foul on the Golden Beavers. It's on Mendoza. There's no time on the clock. Calvin Hurchin goes to the free throw line by himself to try and win it. Here's Calvin Hurchin at the line. First one. Yes! And that's it. Watertown wins it. With no time on the clock, Calvin Hurchin hits the free throw, and Watertown a 61 to 60 stunner here inside the BDHS Fieldhouse. They did it to DeForest on Tuesday night. They come in here tonight and they win another game, another thriller. 61 to 60. And I don't think I've ever seen a finish quite like that one. Wow. 
The Goslings celebrating as they head to the locker room. I have never seen a finish like that. They called a foul at the horn, and that gave Calvin Hirsch in the opportunity to go to the line with no time remaining on the clock, and he buried a free throw to win it. Let's take a break. We're back in three minutes for our postgame show. Back in three minutes on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post Game Show, presented by John Deere. John Deere not only builds great equipment, it's a great place to build your career and a high quality of life. You see, there's a certain kind of pride in being a part of a great American brand. It's the security that comes from learning new skills you'll have for a lifetime, a more confident future with unlimited growth opportunities, and the knowledge that you're valued and rewarded with a competitive benefits package. We're Deer Strong and Horicon Proud. Are you one of us? Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no-pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. Ready, set, ergo. The game plan is to make banking convenient for you. Ergo Bank has locations in Marquezan and Fox Lake with interactive teller machines in five different communities. And at all locations, speak with a live teller and conduct most in-branch transactions by transferring, withdrawing, or depositing. That's better banking by design. Open 7A to 7P Monday through Friday, 7 to noon on Saturdays. Call them today at 920-398-2336 or visit ErgoBank.com. Ergo Bank, an equal housing lender and member FDIC. Is it time to update the bathroom? Then it's time to head to Hometown Glass and Improvement of Beaver Dam. Hometown has a full complement of Vasco shower enclosures. Hometown Glass makes your selection of enclosures easy, and they provide hassle-free installation. When you purchase a Basco shower enclosure, your expectations will be exceeded. Hometown Glass promises you a classy, elegant, and luxurious centerpiece for your bathroom. Hometown Glass and Improvement, Highway 33 east of Beaver Dam, on the web at hometownglass.com. What's in your kid's lunchbox today? Turkey and bacon on honey whole wheat? Roast beef on sourdough? PB&J on cinnamon chip? with bananas that is bananas but that's what fresh baked breads from great harvest can do for you unleash your sandwich ingenuity so show your kids some lunchbox love with chicken salad on cranberry orange bread italian on cheddar garlic bread then show everyone your creation at instagram or facebook using this hashtag great harvest bread the way it ought to be shop the pig Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly in Beaver Dam has everything you need to keep your family happy and healthy. From pampered to perfection produce to boar's head deli meats and cheeses, Fox Brothers award-winning brats and certified Angus beef. If it's not certified, it's not the best. Be sure to go online at Fox Bros Piggly Wiggly and find the latest weekly flyer full of savings and follow them on Facebook to learn more about their upcoming events. Shop local and save at Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly in Beaver Dam. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post Game Show, presented by John Deere. And welcome in to our John Deere Post Game Show, brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works. Final score tonight in this thriller. Watertown, 61. Beaverdam, 60. And as I said before we went to break, I don't think I've ever seen a finish quite like what we just witnessed here Watertown getting the one-point win. We were tied at 60. Beaverdam inbounding the ball in the backcourt with 2.9 seconds to play. They were not able to inbound. They threw it away. Watertown gets the ball with 2.4 seconds to play inbounds. And they get it to Calvin Hurchin, who launches a desperation three before the horn. It was short but they called a foul as the, the horn sounded. So with no time left on the clock, he went to the free throw line. All he had to do was sink a free throw to win it, and he sunk the first free throw as there was no time left on the clock. And Watertown with a thriller, something I don't think I've ever seen, 61-60. to 60. Let's run down the final individual scoring. First of all, 
for the Goslings, who go to 4-18 on the year, 2-11 in the conference. They were led by, well, Brett Schwefel. I talked about him all night long. He was fantastic, and especially in the second half. 25 points for Brett Schwefel to lead all scorers in the game, and 18 of those came in that decisive second half. Meanwhile, he also in double figures, it was Jake Hurchin with 12. He had three three-point baskets in the game. Nine points for Reese Camrath in this one tonight. Ethan Johnson had nine for the Goslings. Cameron Kranz had a three-point shot. He finished with three. And it was Calvin Hurchin. He finished with three, but it was that last free throw that turned out to be the game winner with no time left on the clock. For Beaverdam, they were led tonight by Caleb Schmuel. Caleb Schmuel, 16 points, including a couple of threes in this one. Parker Stobie in double figures. He had four triples, and so Parker Stobie finished with 12 in this one. Eight points for Parker Blank, including one from downtown. Jack Jens had a pair of threes, and eight points total for the Golden Beavers tonight. Six points for Cameron Mendoza. And rounding up scoring, it was Quentin Cabreda with five, J.T. Call also with five for Beaverdam. The Golden Beavers dropped to 10-12 and 12 overall, and they are now 5-9 and nine in Badger East play. What a, what a great game. And, I mean, it's just, you know, if you're a Beaverdam fan, it's, it's disappointment. I get it. If you're a Watertown fan, you're elated. Both these teams came in with a lot of momentum, feeling good about themselves. And, boy, it, it you know, in the first half, it, it, Watertown built up a seven-point lead by the break. But, boy, the, the intensity, the energy, whatever you want to call it, really got ramped up in that second half. And it was kind of a fun second half to watch. And could have been anybody's game. But, wow, Watertown gets it done tonight by the score of 61-60. to 60. They win it by the slimmest of margins. And, uh, yeah, just uh, it was a fun game to watch, that's for sure. We've got uh, Beaverdam head coach, Tim Ladrin heading up here to the broadcast area. We're going to get him a headset here as he comes up. There you go, Tim. Thanks for coming up here. We'll get you all turned on. There we go. Can you hear me okay in there, Tim? Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming up, I, and I appreciate it. And, uh, wow, I just uh, I don't think I've ever seen a finish quite like that. Um, give me your thoughts on this one. I mean, this was, especially in the second half, it just turned into quite the battle, and, your guys, it was right there. It was right there. You were right there at the end, Just, uh, but they get they get the W. Yeah, obviously really, really poor execution down the stretch. I mean, you know, um, you know, just we, not not real smart basketball. And, uh, you know, I, you know, essentially that falls on me, and we got to be better there. Um, but... Yeah, we were we were kind of in a funk all night, and I don't know why. I'll be honest with you. I, we've had played two great games, come out in the first half, and we are we have for whatever reason we have zero energy on senior night. We're slow footed, um, and they took advantage of it. And you got to give them credit. They they uh, they they executed down the stretch. We turned it over and made a couple of really silly fouls late. Yeah, you know, you mentioned it, it's senior night. It's it's Friday night, and I I know that the uh, you know, the last couple of days probably been a little different. They didn't have school today. I know you had a light practice. But, uh, yeah, I mean, coming in, I mean, you had a lot of momentum after the last couple of games. So I suppose that's a little little surprising there, isn't it? That, that, yeah, it's, that, it's really disappointing. Our energy was bad in the first half, really bad. Um, we did a good job getting back in the game with our press. Um, you know, turned them over a few times, got a few easy baskets. Um, but, you know, we, we've got to do a better job. Um as a whole, executing down the, down the stretch, obviously, and because I mean, we had a five-point lead with probably what thirty seconds left and lost it. Yeah, and you you mentioned what, where I saw you guys start to turn the tide a little bit in the second half was was defensively, as you said. Uh, you you forced some turnovers, turn them into points at the other end, and that's kind of where I saw you guys really get back into the game and really kind of get ahead a, a of steam a little bit there in that second half. Yeah, um, yeah, our pressure was good, but we were flying around really well. Um, you know, it helped with you know taking the the big guy out too and he you know he dominated early we had a hard time with him and and then he was doing a good job of finding shooters for them and we we obviously had a hard time with him and his size and um which is kind of sometimes par for the course for us with with a, with a good big guy and he did a nice job and um 
Yeah, I thought our pressure, again, I thought did a good job, you know, getting us back in the ball game. But, um, yeah, it just comes down to the last last minute or so. It was obviously not very good. Well, you know, you don't you have a couple days here to kind of to try and regroup a little bit before you head up to uh, West De Pere. And, um, and, you know, we're, we're winding down, as we talked about in the pregame here. you got West De Pere next week. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you, you're not sure exactly who you're playing Thursday right. for that Badger uh, conference uh, yeah. season-ending event. Yeah, right? it depends on who won tonight, and there's a couple other games to be played. So we know we're home on Thursday. We just don't know who it gets. Okay, so West appears on the road and then yep. not home for Thursday. Okay, so I mean, yeah, I mean, I suppose at this point, you know, just try and uh, try and regroup over the yep. weekend here a little bit. And uh, yep. but uh, well, thanks for coming up. I know yep. it's not easy after a game like this, yep. but. Uh, tell you what i uh, appreciate your, your yep. insight thanks mike appreciate all right it. thank you all right so that's uh, tim ladrin head coach of the golden beavers joining us on the john deere post game show and again uh watertown gets the win tonight here 61 to 60 that's right 61 to 60 a free throw with no time left on the clock wins it for the goslings and that is going to uh pretty much wrap up our john deere post game show uh, brought to you by our good friends at John Deere Horicon Works. Reminder again, tomorrow, big time high school sports doubleheader. It'll be a great day. Tomorrow, part one of the doubleheader is girls high school basketball when the Beaver Dam girls host Monona Grove in the Badger East Conference Championship game. Four o'clock for the tip off, 345 pregame. And then part two is boys hockey. The Beaver Dam boys hockey team will entertain Cedarburg across the street at the Family Center in a WIAA playoff game. That's a 7.30 start time. Pre-game show at 7.15. You can watch both of those games right here on Daily Dodge TV or listen to the simulcast on 1430 ESPN. So if you can't make it in person, we've got you covered tomorrow for girls basketball and for hockey. Tonight's game has been brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Columbus Family Dental, Hometown Glass and Improvement, and the Beaverdam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, AirCare, Richards Insurance, Landmark Credit Union, Jerry's Automotive, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Ergo Bank, Great Harvest Bakery Cafe, Fox Brothers Piggly Wiggly, Preferred Dental Partners, Slumberland, Kraft Heinz, Silica for your home, and Summit Ford. That's going to wrap it up for all of us. Again, thank you for being with us. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Want to thank uh, the entire crew for doing a great job. Justin Wilski, thank you for being the videographer and engineer as per usual. Ember and Toast were here too. And I can't forget Kyra Wilski back at the 1430 ESPN Studios for engineering the radio simulcast. That is the best crew in the business, folks, and it's an honor to work with them. My name is Mike Tronson saying so long from the BDHS Fieldhouse. Once again, your final score tonight, Watertown 61, Beaverdam 60. Have a pleasant evening. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. This has been a Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Sports presentation. Good night, everybody. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post.